If your name wasn't Trump or Sanders, nobody cared about you in New Hampshire this week. The whole anti-establishment thing is still cooking. I guess Sanders isn't outside the beltway per se, but his message is anti-democratic establishment. Both he and Trump dominated New Hampshire with double-digit victories. And Chris Christie dropped out of the race yesterday afternoon, but not before he ruined Marco Rubio's chances in New Hampshire with those attacks that he levied during the GOP debate right beforehand. That made a huge difference in Rubio's finish, I think. Thank you, New Hampshire. New Hampshire, I want to thank you. We love you. We're going to be back a lot. We're not going to forget you. You started it. Remember, you started it. Poor Hillary and Bill Clinton pasted fake smiles on their faces as a socialist, of all things, hammered them by 22 points. Now the political world is buzzing with rumors of staff shakeups in their campaign. Joining me now to laugh a little at Hillary and cringe at the idea of Bernie as president is ACU Chairman Matt Schlapp. Matt, great to have you here. Great to be with you again, Liz. We saw these double-digit victories from Trump and from Sanders in New Hampshire. It's actually even worse than that. Trump got more than twice the numbers of Kasich, uh, who finished second to him. Were you surprised Trump and Sanders won by so much? Uh, no, I'm really not surprised. I think Hillary Clinton is a perfectly miserable presidential candidate. She is not the candidate her husband was. And, uh, and I'm not surprised Trump won either. I think... Um, New Hampshire was a very good fit for him. He was up in all the polls heading into it. I think he had a good operation, and uh, it was a big boost to his campaign. I'm not surprised that uh, both of those people won. I am surprised by the margin. I mean, Bernie decimated Hillary, and I was surprised Trump won by uh, more than double Kasich. But what do you think of Kasich's second-place finisher? Is that kind of a game-changer, or is this just a one-and-done for him? I think it's more one and done. I think he deserves a lot of credit. Um, it surprised me he did so well. I thought he might finish more in, in with the pack um, and, uh, you know, not such a clear second finish. But, you know, he doesn't have an operation in South Carolina. He doesn't really have operations in these other states coming up, including on the SEC Super Tuesday primary. So I think John Kasich's highlight of his campaign will be New Hampshire, but it was very impressive. And at least now he's uh, been to so many places in New Hampshire, they'll definitely welcome him back. Uh, do you think it's going to be possible for Rubio <laughs> to recover from uh, his robotics in the last GOP debate? Or is he? Or did that damage him pretty good? You know, Liz, uh, you've, you've put your finger on the key question. And I don't know if I know the answer. I know that he had a very damaging debate performance um, in New Hampshire. And I give him a lot of credit. He, he's taken the guff, and he's, it's, he's saying it was his fault. And he didn't execute, which I think you know, shows that he has character. But the real question is, do voters going forward view him as their president? Remember, that's what we're picking here. We're picking the person who will be the Republican nominee who could become the next president. I do know people have huge regard for Marco Rubio. He's an, a very impressive person. But he has to demonstrate that he's ready to be the commander in chief to make those really big decisions. And if he can pass that test, I think he can go all the way. Right. I think you made a good point. It's about his character here. And that's something that I like about him as a candidate uh, before he was even a presidential candidate, even when he sponsored the Gang of Eight bill, which I do not support. Uh, afterward, he admitted what he did. He said that it wasn't the right choice to do. And he's done that historically. I have a lot of respect for that in uh, a politician because it doesn't seem to be too common of a characteristic. What do you see, Matt, happening in Nevada and in South Carolina? Who do you think is going to get first there? I think Trump's on a real roll here. Um, this is the place, South Carolina should be the place that Ted Cruz can really flex his muscles and show that in a real one-on-one -on -one primary state that he can beat Donald Trump. You know, if he does, uh, this race is completely on a new track. If Trump wins in South Carolina, he could start to roll through these states. And I do think Nevada is a little bit unique uh, of a state. And with Rand Paul out of the race, I think Marco might be able to show some better numbers there. The real key, Liz, is going to be the Super Tuesday uh, on March 1st. It's in a, a big number of states, big, complicated, populous states, and it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of organization to be able to ramp up these victories. And these other candidates, if they can't actually win states, then in the end of the day, what they're doing is really just wasting time and money. If you can't win states, 
in the end, you're not really in the race. Well, they're investing, Matt, in their own careers. They're staying into audition, if you will, uh, to be part of the administration of whoever <laughs> does win. I think that's why we're seeing so many drop out after New Hampshire, though, just for the exact reason that you said, that there's so much money that has to be invested in the March primaries that they're like, yeah, I know I don't have a chance. I'm not going to waste my money there. Uh, let's turn to the Democrats for a second. So Clinton is hoping to bank on her minority support here, especially in South Carolina, even in Nevada. Uh, but Bernie Sanders recently got the endorsement of the former uh, president of the NAACP. Is that going to switch the tides for him? Uh, yeah, I think that's a big deal. I think Bernie Sanders is going to do much better in these uh, diverse communities than the Clinton campaign is spinning. They are saying that Bernie Sanders can't do well in states with high African-American uh, populations. And I think uh, he's going to show that they're wrong. And why is that? Because he's got all the energy of all the youthful voters, of all those left-leaning progressive activists. He has got all the excitement and energy behind him. And I think it's going to be seen in almost every demographic group that makes up the Democratic Party. It's because he's, in, it's, he's sincere. I've said this a million times, and I'll say it again. Even though I think he's so misguided, he's completely wrong. He'd be a disaster for our country. He's, he is authentic in the sense that he believes this stuff. I don't know where he gets his information that he draws that conclusion, but there's something, there's something appealing about presidential candidates when we actually feel like they're telling the truth or they have the best interest of us at their heart. And he does, even if he's wrong about how it'll end up. Um, now, the Democratic debate is happening right now, as you know. Do these debates help people make decisions anymore, or are voters just tired of seeing people up there? Uh, you know, maybe you and I get a little tired of it. I don't know. But uh, I think it's actually great for the voters. Uh, look at the Republican Party. We have had more people voting in our primary, certainly look at the primary in New Hampshire, and more people watching our debates than uh, that are involved in the Democratic process. Um, you know, if you look at the, uh, the votes that Donald Trump got in New Hampshire, he got about the same number of votes as Hillary Clinton, and she's in a two-person contest, and he's in an 11-person contest. There are more people participating in the Republican process, and the debates have been a big part of that. So I'm really happy how all this has turned out. I'm glad Americans from all across the country are paying attention to the race. I think it's because Obama and his policies have worried people so much that they're tuning in about the future of their country. Right, I'm glad you brought that up about Obama's policies, because I think Hillary's strategy thus far has, to be, has been to try to be more of a moderate, not to be as far left as Obama. But do you think that she's going to need to readjust, maybe with her staff shakeups, but move towards the left, because that's the rhetoric that Bernie's spewing right now that's actually appealing to people? Yeah, you know, Hillary Clinton does not have a staff problem, Liz. They have a candidate problem. And she is moving left fast. If you looked at her speech after the New Hampshire primary, she is sounding as left as Bernie Sanders, as left as uh, Senator Warren. And uh, the, the American people are watching this, and it's going to be way too radical for them to accept. All right, Matt, we're almost out of time, but very quick answer. What do you expect from the GOP debate on Saturday? You know, I think we're going to see much of the same. I think Marco will do better, and I think Trump will be plenty sufficient. And, uh, and I think Cruz is going to be the one trying to do everything he can to land punches. Right. I think Rubio is going to come out with some quips, with some jokes, because he's going to want to make sure to counter that narrative of him looking like a robot. So I'm looking for, her to, or for him to say some funny things. That's my prediction.